You are just being a rational person. So, so we we need to we need to think about food security in a much more. Um, uh, uh, we didn't need to think productivity. Otherwise, we are going to be singing this song. We are increasing our import bill. We are going to, to continue having this import bill increasing so long as we do not deal with productivity and asking the hard questions. For instance, what happens to the subsidy? We have been told that subsidizing fertilizers will make mass production cheaper, isn't it? Why has it not become cheaper? to produce maize and therefore be more competitive. How does a person who is across the border in Mount Terrigon, the soils are the same as the one in, in, in Cheptais, why would the farmers from Uganda sell maize at 1,200 and make a profit, and farmers in Kenya are being paid 2,500 cents, and they are not making profits? Until we ask those hard questions, we are just going to be pretending that uh, Tunas Idiana. Hmm? If you are a private business, we will, you just go broke. There's nothing like, you know? So we just must ask ourselves, this fertilizer that was being given, why has it not made us competitive? This year we have produced less coffee than we produced in 1963. Hmm? So, so we look at hmm? production, we look at prices of outputs and inputs, we ask ourselves, why are competitors doing better? The distribution infrastructure. Why are people having, um, why is maize not moving from, from Turukana to, from Kitare to Turukana? And it's just a few kilometers away. Labor market, yeah? government budget, subsidy and staff. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> I don't know whether this is, we are, here we are looking at, um, Again, looking at the, the dimensions, and then we are asking ourselves, where are the potential opportunities, where are the threats? And uh, you can be able to have a discussion around, around that. It's not very visible from my end, but you are going to get this. So you are asking yourselves, um, in terms of availability, um, what is the potential opportunity for, for trade? What are the potential threats? Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, have a look at each one of them. We can interrogate them if you, if you want us to do that, maybe. But uh, that is the way um, we thought about this. So that is one, one, one table that I wanted you to see. Then there is another one that I'm calling possible short-term and medium to long-term effects on trade on the four dimensions of, of food security. And uh, it's a long table. And, um, where there is a, which color is that? The first one, the possible positive impact. Which color is that? Hmm? Anyway, that, that color, the right blue, uh, is possible, where there is a possible positive impact, whether short term or medium term. And when there where is this, uh, is it gray, this one? Then you have a possible negative impact. And um, so again, um, I confined myself to the dimensions availability. So, for instance, you are saying that in terms of food availability, we are saying that trade boost imports and decrease the quality and variety of food available. Yes, when there is 20, that 20 years ago, we never used to eat uh, apples, true or not. Eh? But now because of import, there's a, we, some of the men inside here have developed this for apples, you know, because that has been afforded by the, you know, the trade. So, I've been asked to fight to, to wind up, but that's the way the table is. So that first um, panel is um, uh, the possible positive impact. Then, um, then, the, then the ne next one is uh, is for the negative impact, and for each of the um, dimensions, access the same, uh, utilization the same, stability the same. For conclusion, I just want us to look at uh, the for the. Um, uh, which one? I think there is one last one. I'm saying that the discussion concerning advantages and disadvantages of trade and food security does highlight a number of questions for policymakers. That is, I mean, we need to ask ourselves where we are going. We are going because certainly the, this country we have talked about food security for so long. Uh, Stephen will tell you we have been reviewing. And somebody has mentioned here we have been reviewing the 
the number of policies, we have a big volume of government policies on food security. Many. I don't know how many documents. Some more than 20, isn't it? But the question is that why are we not implementing these many policies that we have done? And the, the, that will afford big, big opportunities for, for trade and big opportunities for people to become much more food secure. Thank you very much. Uh, I think my time is up. Thank you very much.